Hi, I'm Kim Coco. Today's 30-minute yin class is going to be one that opens up the chest, the shoulders, the lats. It's something I use for a quick fix after a round of golf if I only have a short amount of time to stretch. It's also wonderful if you've been sitting at a desk all day and you want to open up the front side of the body again. That being said, we're going to get right into it because 30 minutes is a very short yin class. And we'll start by opening up the feet after walking around or even if you've been out in shoes all day. So I would start by tucking the toes under, bringing knees hip distance apart or maybe even a little bit closer. And then make sure that pinky toe can also still splay out to the side. So all 10 toes can actually press into the floor as though you're going to reach back to the ball mount of the foot and the heel. And then allow your spine to lengthen, shoulders to drop down your back and lightly close your eyes. And we'll be here for about a minute to simply tune in, reconnect with your foundation. And then feel your knees just lightly moving forward. Maybe they actually move slightly. Feel the hips sink down towards the heels and feel the crown of the head reach up towards the ceiling. If this is out of the question, by all means, you can just sit in Vajrasana, sitting on the heels. But use this time to just tune into any sensations that you're aware of in your body right now. And then begin to tap in your breath. Take a deep inhale and fill up fully. Pause at the top, but soften the shoulders down. Exhale it back out. So let's do two more of those. Deep breath in. A light pause at the peak of inspiration. Exhaling the breath back out. Last time, fill up. Take a pause, grow taller out of your pelvis with the spine, and exhale the breath back out. From here, go ahead and make your way to hands and knees. We'll take our nice puppy pose. So we'll actually go ahead, it's called Anahatasana and Yin, to open up the heart, but really it's working with the lats. So you might take a round of cat-cow to massage out the spine for a moment here, tucking and rounding the spine, and then creating a nice gentle back bend. And then when you're ready, feel your hips right over your knees, draw the belly button towards your spine, draw the shoulder blades down the back and lengthen out through the crown of your head. And then keep the belly button drawing up towards the spine and slowly start to walk your hands out in front of you, allowing the chest to start to melt towards the floor, the head and neck to drop. Support your head you, if you need to with a block or a blanket as you draw the shoulder blades down the back. Maybe even come onto your fingertips and let the shoulders move away from the ears as you melt the heart towards the floor and the shoulder blades towards the spine. Notice if you can still feel your hips right over your knees. You soften your jaw and your throat as you lengthen through both sides of your torso. Broaden across the collarbones. And then use your next inhale to walk your hands back up underneath your shoulders and come to lie on your belly. So we're going to go ahead and take a nice opener for the back of the shoulder blades, the infraspinatus, the teres minor, the rhomboids. So from here, we're actually going to start with your right arm first. You might want to have a block or a blanket for a pillow in case you need it. 
We're going to go ahead and walk. We'll start with the left hand. We'll walk the left hand across your body over to the right. And then we'll walk that right arm across over to the left. So you have a nice cross in the arms. Show you like this. Essentially, you're on your ground, on the ground like this. If it's too tight, you can always place a blanket underneath your chest as well to make it easier. We're going to be here for about two minutes on each side. So allow the hands to reach out to opposite sides of the body. Take the right top of the foot, press it into the floor, maybe even lift it away from the ground and reach it back behind you and return it to the floor. Lift the left leg up, reach it back behind you and lower it down further away from the pelvis than it was before. And then let your chin rest on your upper right arm since the right arm's in front. Support your head with a block or a blanket if you need to. And then see if you can feel the belly button still drawing in towards the spine with every breath. Letting the hips get heavier. The torso get heavier. Noticing that if there is some tension in this part of the body, you can soften the feet, the hands, the eyes, the throat, the butt cheeks. Notice where you're clenching to help out. Take another three rounds of breath in here. Again, melting the heart towards the floor as best you can as the body gets a little more at ease with each out breath. Use your third inhale to slowly come back up. This time, take the right arm across to the left side of the body, palm facing down. Walk the left arm over to the right. You might notice a difference right to left. One might feel significantly looser or more tight. Just be okay with what you find. Take an inhale, lengthen your crown of your head away from the heart and the feet away from the pelvis. Fold in and come back to your breath. Notice your head get heavier and the tongue rest at the bottom of your mouth. Again, take your next three rounds of breath on this side. If you are using this as your post-golf stretch, you might notice one side is significantly more tight than the other. 
and you might want to pause this video and take an extra minute on the side that was more tight whether that's keeping your arms as they are or switching and taking another minute on that first side otherwise inhale slowly walk your hands back underneath your shoulders come back up onto hands and knees we'll take anahatasana one more time puppy pose for another minute so again lengthen shoulder blades down the back reach out through the crown of the head hips park over the knees slowly walk your hands out away from your hips maybe come onto the fingertips as you draw the shoulder blades down the back maybe draw the belly button again up into the spine as you melt the heart towards the floor Noticing the difference from when you approached this pose just a few minutes ago to this moment. Can you feel the bottom tips of the shoulder blades drawing more towards the midline of the body and towards the front of the body? As you lift the forearms away from the floor. Use your next inhale, walk your hands back up underneath your shoulders, tuck the toes under. Go ahead and take one round of breath in your downward facing dog, maybe two. It's on here for just a second, so I have room to move. But as you reach up and back with your hips, feel both sides of the body long again. And then maybe from here, reach that right leg up and back for a three-legged dog stretch. Open the hip, bend that right knee if you need to. And then gaze between your hands, help the right knee behind the right wrist for pigeon pose. Right ankle by the left hip, walk the left foot back in space. And actually gaze over the left foot and make sure it's that whole leg is directly behind your left hip. Score your torso to the front of the room and use your exhale to fold. We've got about three minutes here. So you have a couple different options. You can stay in your regular folded pigeon or as they call it in yin, your swan pose. Or if you wanna take a threaded version of swan, you can go ahead and allow that right arm to come up off the ground. You can take the left hand or left arm and weave it underneath you, just like you take a thread the needle pose weave it so that the left shoulder comes towards the ground. If it doesn't come all the way onto the ground, you can go ahead and place a blanket under the left shoulder. But feel the right hip ground down towards the floor, uh, whether you rock your torso a little bit or the pelvis a little bit more to the right. Noticing a stretch in the whole back side of the left shoulder blade, left shoulder. If you are taking that threaded version, Right fingertips can stay on the floor. You can actually press the floor away to help twist the torso to the right if that feels good. Or just let the right arm reach out as though you were still in your folded swan. And again, we're taking about three minutes here. So you're half, almost halfway through, maybe a third of the way through. Simply take your time with your breath, using the breath as a way to create space in the body, using that prana as a way to replenish any areas that feel tight or constricted or simply uncomfortable. Hoping to restore balance to your body after playing a round of golf or just living your everyday normal life.
comes a breath on this side. So slow it down. Let the pelvis get heavy, let the legs get heavy, let the head get heavy. ready to unwind, slowly take that left hand out from underneath the twist, lengthen the heart up, and roll onto your right hip and swing that left leg out in front of you. We're going to take our shoelace pose, so we're going to cross the left knee over the right. If it's too uncomfortable, you can always extend the right leg out in front of you and take half shoelace if that feels good. Or if you want a little extra support, you can sit on a blanket or a pillow to maybe lift your hips up a little bit higher. Decide where you're going to be. If you can feel both hips grounding down, you're good to go. And then you're welcome to stay right here if you want. Or if you want to take an eagle arm bind, you can go ahead and cross right elbow over left, lifting the elbows up away from the floor, away from your torso as you drop the shoulder blades down. Maybe you take a bind with the forearms together and the palms touching. And you've got two minutes here. You can stay more upright, dropping both sitting bones down to the ground. You're also welcome to hinge forward and maybe take a fold, a light fold or a deep fold forward, whether you have a bind or not with the arms. But just notice as we find this 50 to 70% intensity level you can still breathe comfortably. You might even let your chin drop so your forehead rests on your forearms, your palms. There's really no additional tension needed here to support your upper body. Notice if you can lengthen your spine out of the pelvis with every breath in. So it's lengthening the front and back side of the torso. Softening the shoulders down away from the ears, every exhale. Okay, there's about three more deep rounds of breath here. On your next inhale, slowly unwind. You can roll out the shoulders a couple times. Make your way back to downward facing dog. Take a moment there to pedal out the heels. Spread the fingers, press the floor away, let the head and neck relax. And then from here, inhale, reach that left leg up and back, bend the left knee, open up the hip towards the side of the room. Look between the hands, step the left knee behind the right wrist for pigeon, second side. 
So again, here you can just choose to stay a little more upright as you draw the left heel by the right hip and draw the left hip back in space, broadening the collarbones. Or you can fold forward if that feels good. Or you can take your thread the needle option and swan or really sleeping the swan <laughs> second round. So if you're taking the threaded version, left arm out, right arm moves behind the left. Turn your head to the left. And you have a couple options here. You can stay the left arm out in front of you, the left arm to the side. But keep drawing the left hip down towards the floor. Pillow for this side. And you might just notice again a difference right to left. So be okay with what you find. Finding out where you can breathe more comfortably. Or can you find a little bit more ease in the body? What musculature can release without necessarily being involved, whether that's the fingers, the feet, gripping in the face or the throat. And breathe more deeply here for your last minute. Take your next deep breath in and fill up. Stay for the exhale. Use that following in breath to unwind. Sit on your left hip. Swing the right leg up in front of you and over top of your left knee for your shoelace second side. Again, prop up your sitting bones if you need to. Extend the left leg if you need to. Decide what's going to help make this pose more comfortable. And again, you're welcome to stay right where you're at without an arm bind. <laughs> or you might choose to wrap left elbow over right this time. Maybe bring the forearms together, pressing the elbows out away from the torso, away from the floor. Dropping that right sitting bone down. Make sure it can ground down into a blanket or the floor. Maybe let your forehead rest on your hands if you have the bind. And then we'll see if we can breathe here for the next few minutes. As you breathe here, allow that to be your point of focus. 
or focus on what you appreciate most about your body able to be here. Your mental willingness to stay put and still with the body so that the mind can learn to focus. Length of the spine up out of the pelvis for the last three rounds of breath. After those three rounds, unwind your arms, unwind your legs, maybe windshield wiper out the knees by taking the feet hip distance apart, hands behind you, and rocking the knees side to side. And then make your way onto your back. I'm gonna take a gentle spinal twist. So from here, recline fully. Maybe hug the knees in towards the chest. Take your arms out at shoulder height in a T position. Cross the right knee over the left. If that's too intense, you can just keep the knees side by side. Otherwise, lift and shift the hips an inch or two to the right. And go ahead and drop the knees over to the left. And then the left arm can go in maybe a cactus shape if you want to bend the elbow. You might even take that right arm up more at a 45 degree angle to get more space in the whole right side of the body. Let's feel the left hip move towards the front of the room or towards the front of your mat. Feel the back side of the shoulder blades get heavy as they start to drop towards the floor. And then just notice how quickly you can drop in. being comforted and sustained by the rhythm of your breath. If you're a left-handed golfer, you might choose to stay here an extra minute. 
If you'd like to stay more even, take your next breath in and slowly unwind to center. If you're taking a symmetrical time on each side, cross the left knee over the right. Shift the hips to the left and drop the knees over to the right. Right arm out at shoulder height. Maybe the elbow is bent, maybe the arm is straight. And the left arm has the opportunity to either reach up and out to the side or more up at a diagonal towards the back left corner of your mat. And as you're here, feel the left hip move towards the front of your mat. the back of the torso heavy and the back of your head heavy. Finding a place you can let go of. Finding a place you can rest into whether that's physically or mentally or emotionally. Go ahead and take your next breath in. Stay for the exhale. If you're a right-handed golfer, you might even want to stay a full extra minute on this side. Otherwise, if you're symmetrical in your times for each side, come back to center, hug your knees in towards your chest. Maybe rock a little side to side, maybe reach for the soles of the feet, taking a happy baby pose. And then you have the option of making your way right to Shavasana, where you can roll over to one side, grab your blanket, take your blanket, and go ahead and make a nice thick roll with your blanket to open up the heart for one last pose, especially if you've just gone golfing. It's nice to open the heart once again, or if you've sat at a computer all day, both of which I've done a lot this week. You can take your legs straight into Shavasana. You can take soles of the feet together. Take the rib cage, the lowest part of the ribs, to your blanket roll. And then take your arms out at a T or bend the elbows slightly. And then we'll take three cleansing breaths to settle in for this relaxation here at the end of our quick practice. So on your next breath in, Inhale deeply and fill up. Feel the back of the lungs press into your bolster or your mat. Feel the lungs expand to the side and the top and pause. Exhale, nose or mouth. So two more, just like that. Fill up. Hold lightly. Melt the body. Exhale it out. The last time, deep inhale. Pause. Feel the shoulder blades wrap around your blanket if you're on the roll. Exhale it out. And then let go of the breath entirely, letting the body breathe itself. simply being present in how the body melts down towards the floor thanks to gravity. 
being present with how the breath moves through the body effortlessly. Being present with the state of your mind. Okay, with whatever arises. And then continually modifying and improving the quality of your focus by returning your internal gaze to your breath. If you have time to stay here and want to, please do. If you know you're on more of a time schedule, maybe start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Maybe take a nice long stretch up overhead and out with the legs as though you're waking up all over again. See if we're taking a moment to roll over to one side. And then making your way back to a seat for a moment here, aware of the changes you've made in your body. Take your hands to your heart and bow your gaze. Thanking yourself for restoring energy at the cellular level. Balance which the body so deeply knows and appreciates when we participate in this process. And thanks for sharing this time with me today. Namaste.